Hi everyone, this is Neil Wright, a consultant, audiologist and director of Clearbacks. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the iClearscope Endoscope. And here we have a patient who suffers from chronic otomycosis. So otomycosis is the medical term given to a fungal ear infection. And when we say chronic, this patient's forever having to return to have this uh, debrided, so cleared. Um, and it's been several years now. Um, We've written to the GP several times and the GP has been really responsive. They've taken um, a swab. Uh, it's very clear what this patient's got just by visually examining the ear, but nonetheless, it's a good thing. And the swab analysis has confirmed that this patient's particular strain of fungal infection is Aspergillus niger. And the hallmarks of Aspergillus niger, you tend generally get um, some black fungal spores. They can start off a yellowy, greeny color, and, but as they mature, they turn black and you'll see a few of those. And you've also got this hyphae on the surface of this skin. So this is just dead skin now lining the entire ear canal and eardrum. So hyphae is like woolly strands and you, you'll, you'll see it uh, a bit clearer in a moment. So we're just tasked with peeling this layer of skin off the ear canal and also off the eardrum. Now, this patient, believe it or not, is 98, but they are as fit as a fiddle. Um, they still play tennis. I'm just checking there, I'm just checking the R90 at the R. Um, lovely gentleman. So they've also been seen by ENT, and ENT um, tried various things and just recommended this patient come visit me on a regular basis to have their ears clean. So you can see those fungal spores, you can see those that high feet. I don't know about you, but when I see fungal infections, it does put the hairs on the back of my neck up. Um, so this patient does wear a hearing aid, and that could be one of the attributing factors. Um, it may not be the main primary course. Um, so with a hearing aid, particularly in older patients, um, so hearing aid, wearing a hearing aid, and this patient wears it most of the day, can create um, sweat and humidity. And that's one of the conditions that um, both bacteria and fungi thrive upon. However, this patient has gone through a period of not wearing the hearing aid, and they're still um, kind of suffering from this chronic otomycosis. So we're just trying to peel it now this skin is what we call a squam of dead skin and let me just explain that in a bit more detail now um the outer layer of the skin is the epidermis layer now the outer third of the ear canal has got three layers of skin it's got the epidermis the dermis and the hypodermis or the subcutaneous layer um so the epidermis is the most superficial layer of skin and the outermost layer of the epidermis, because the epidermis can be broken down into four layers in the ear and five layers in other parts of the body. Let me just see if I can remember those. So the deepermost layer of the epidermis called the stratum basal. That Then you get the stratum spin spinulosum, then the stratum granulosum, and then on your, on the, um, the, on your palms of your feet and hands, you've got the stratum lucidum, and then you have the stratum corneum. And the stratum corneum is made up of corneocytes, and corneocytes are essentially dead skin. And these corneocytes initially, there's like 30 layers of those as well, um, and they're interlocked, they're interconnected, but as the skin migrates, um, towards the entrance of the ear, so that lateral um, epithelial migration of skin that I've talked about uh, quite a few times in um, past videos. As the skin reaches near the entrance of the outer third of the ear canal, those individual corneocytes then begin to flake away from one another, and then um, we call that desquamous. So squamous is when the individual corneocytes are interlocked, so with this skin, even the skin near the entrance, they're interlocked. Um, so when we peel it, it comes out in sheets. It's, it's almost like um, uh, a keratosis obturans. So a keratosis obturans, this is not keratosis obturans, but a keratosis obturans is a dermal skin plug. Sorry, an epidermal, not dermal, epidermal. So it's made up of the outer layer of skin. Um, and with keratosis obturans, one of the characteristics is that you have onion layers, it's called a lamella structure. So again, the individual skin cells are still interconnected. So you get sheets of skin and they then form into a rubber ball. That's the way I describe it because it's got that rubber texture. 
So I'm just continuing to peel it from the anterior canal wall. And so this squam of skin is also then attached to the patient's eardrum. It's all the way around. It's, it's, so I'm peeling it from 360 degrees of the ear canal. And I haven't already, I might have, I might have just missed it, but I'm get, I've used forceps on a couple of occasions. Sometimes with the forceps, with this type of skin though, it just cuts it. It doesn't peel it in a, in a long sheet. So this remaining bit of skin is on the eardrum and it's trapped in the anterior recess. So in the right ear, this is the patient's right ear, I've got their left ear procedure. So I'll update, upload that tomorrow separately. This is the more, uh, more exciting one, so I thought I'll upload that today. Uh, but the anterior recess in the right ear is, um, as we approach the eardrum, the ear canal narrows from the, typically from the front section of the ear canal, so the right hand side, and about half a centimetre away, it's at its narrowest point, and then it widens again. And so we've got a lot of debris in that anterior recess. So I'm just using the forceps here. So I managed to get a good grip here, I'm pulling, and I could feel some resistance. I know it's really large but I've got a good sheet out here but you can see it's not removed all of it so I'm just going to go back in with a suction I'm going to the top part of the ear canal I'm just peeling it down and I'm also going to go to the back part so yeah I'm just going to check how frequent this patient comes just bear with me um, it's almost every month actually Yeah, um, every four weeks, bless him. But as I said, we've, we've done everything we can our side. We've referred the patient to the GP and GP's referred to ENT. And as I said, the advice was just to, and they still take antifungals as well. Uh, they've tried to minimize wearing the hearing aid, but even then it reoccurs. They avoid water in the air, which is really, really important. I've also asked them to check the humidity in the house, because it could be that in this particular room this patient's in is high levels of humidity. I've had that with another patient who suffered from chronic otomitrosis and um, they brought some sort of um, a sensor to check the humidity and they found that the one particular room had high levels of humidity and I think, uh, what did they do? They got certain plants apparently um, and they got a dehumidifier as well and it reduced the humidity to an acceptable level and their fungal infections really really improved. So again, another sheet of dead skin. Still can't see the eardrum. And behind this more crusted fungal infested layer of skin is another layer of skin on the eardrum, which we're also gonna peel away. It's more of a damp, macerate skin. And that's again, likely to absorb the humidity. Patient could slightly feel this pinch away because uh, it is attached to the eardrum. Now I didn't wanna use any drops because obviously they've got a, a, an infected ear. So I've read some papers that um, it's it's an Indian um, ENT based paper about fungal infections. And one of the causes they feel in India is a lot of um, locals in India use coconut oil and mustard oil in the ear. And apparently they, a fungi can feed off that. Now with olive oil, I haven't found that same level of kind of research. Um, one paper said that olive oil isn't, uh, doesn't promote fungal growth, but then I read a contradictory paper as well. But a lot of the research does suggest that mustard oil, I'm sure it's mustard oil and coconut oil, um, can lead to a fungal, but will exacerbate a fungal infection. So I try and avoid using any olive oil if possible. Um, sodium bicarbonate drops, they are water-based but they're meant to be antiseptic as well, but anything that increases the pH level of the ear. Now, fungi are less, so with bacterial infections, uh, the pH level is more critical because our ear is full of bacteria, healthy bacteria, and the ear is mildly acidic. Um, but if the pH level of the ear increases, so it becomes more neutral or even alkaline, you can give rise to more pathogenic bacteria, which prefer uh, more neutral conditions like Pseudomonas aeruginosa. So they're called neutrophilic bacteria. Um, fungi, uh, the pH level is not as critical. It's more about warmth, uh, moisture, humidity. 
So we managed to get that kind of sheets of um, dead skin. We did get a bit of clarinet in there. You saw the skin kind of vibrate, but it's short lived. It's going to try and remove as much of this as possible. And you've got this undercoat already developing, as you can see, um, a very thin sheet of skin there. And eventually that's going to form what I've just removed. And it's, it's, it's so quick, it's in four weeks. So I can't really see the eardrums fully. So I'm just really going in now with the endoscope to get a good view. And you can see you've got this more damper layer of skin right on the eardrum. I said fungi prefer the deeper part of the ear canal because that's warmer. So I think there's two or three sheets of skin here. So we can start to see the hammer bone just to the right of the suction tip. I'm going to have to try and peel this upwards, I think. So... I'm going to get a suction grip and pull up and away. I'm pretty sure we do get there we are. And the skin kind of peels backwards afterwards. I think, do I use forceps or try forceps? <coughs> but I couldn't get the grip, I don't think. Um, I might have already been edited that out, I'm not sure. So I'm just doing this back skin peel. You can just see how thin this sheet of skin is. It's translucent. And they have got quite a narrow entrance as well. So I'm just using the left hand side of the ear canal, um, the endoscope to push open the first bend on the left. I'm just mopping up skin that I just saw there. So there's still a bit of debris. I'm sure I clear a little bit more. So this piece of skin, you can see it's come away. So I'm just going to peel this one away as well. So this here, although it's 15 minutes, overall it took me about 21 minutes. Obviously there's bits where I edited out when I wasn't in the air. And their left ear was about 12 minutes, so uh, it was a lengthy procedure. A normal earwax removal appointment, uh, a kind of bog standard one, it's probably going to be probably five minutes per ear, and that's that's tops really. Now, where do we stop? Because there's so many layers here, so I'm just getting this layer that's wanting to come away. There's another layer underneath, but that's not. Well, there's not another layer here, but a bit further in, but that's just wasn't ready to be peeled away. So I'm just looking at the back part of the ear canal just to make sure there's no debris there. Um, there's a bit of skin top of the eardrum and a bit at the bottom. So I'm just going into the anterior recess. There's a bit of skin that just got in the way. This skin here was very adhesive. I'm not sure I managed to peel that away. So again, that's coming directly off the eardrum. So here I'm just going to have to glide the suction tip left to right, I think. I'm pretty sure I get that. Let's have a look. So again, just going into the anterior recess region, or that's just in front of it. And it made such a difference to the patient. Every time they come, they can hear so much. And understandably, you can see how blocked it was. There's just a bit on the hammer bone. There's a bit still here, near, just below the umbo. I'm not sure how much more I get. There's a little bit at the bottom. I'm sure I get. I do remember getting this out. So I'm just pushing open the ear with the endoscope, getting the right angle, using the 17 gauge, I think. Brilliant. So I'm really happy with that. See the whole eardrum. So it looks like a thickened eardrum. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.